Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Gaming On Board. Tonight, Comet is on board. And my face. Also, the expansion for Comet, The Road to Tosseti, is also on board. Let's go down to the table and take a look. Alright, so Comet is an area control game. That's literally what it is. You're trying to control different areas on the map to win victory points and win the game. First player to eight victory points is the winner in a basic game. You can play less or more to shorten or lengthen the game. Um, so obviously this is Egyptian themed. And <clears throat> I'll let you look at the back of the box. Even though it's probably going to make all my components go everywhere. Now, this is the back of the box done right. I mean, look at all this information pictures of all the components showcasing some of the best artwork clearly shows the player count time which is not accurate <laughs> 14 and up everything you get in the box with big exclamation points because you do get a lot of stuff in this box they show all the monsters this is how you sell a game if i'm looking at the back of the box and i've never played this game I'm like wow i just want to open it and look at all the stuff. So, uh, let's take the box slid off. This is not an unboxing. I've already opened this and played it many times. So, first off, let me separate all the Tossetti stuff because we'll go through that. They give you a little index of what all the little cards and tiles do. So you're going to have to pass this around the table. A lot of people make photocopies of these. I just hadn't gotten around to it. Um, the instruction book does show you what areas of the map are active in, at different player counts. And what the uh, main locations and uh, different items on the map do. Uh, this instruction booklet it was really helpful. Um, you really don't need to look up any videos. You can just go right through here. You do have to refer back a few times because there's some special situations that come up during battle and movement and things. But overall, the instruction booklet's done very well. I was very happy with it. Um, it even gives you some advice on how to play the game. So let's take a look at the game board first. Big old game board, nice big map, but the way they've done it is genius. So, if you're playing a two player game, you'll use this side of the board. It tells you right here this side is for a four player game or a two player game, and then on the other side, it'll tell you, which I won't be able to show you very well, but right up here. There you go. This part's for a five-player game or a three-player game. And basically, depending on the number of players you're using, this side of the map will be off-limits. So I'm pretty sure at a three-player game, that side of the map, yeah. On a three-player game, you'll use this board because it has the three players up here. This side will be unaccessible see has it grayed out and then on the other side if it's a two-player game the uh east bank i think that's what they call it will also be inaccessible and if you look the spots are very deliberately the spaces are very deliberately separated so that there's equal distance from all these starting cities to the other cities and the temples. So nobody really has any advantage over anybody else starting out on either of the sides of the board. So regardless of where you're starting, whether it's this city or that city or that city or there's one down here you can't really see, you're the same distance from the temples, the obelisks, and different things. So, And for the five player they throw in an extra temple 
um, just to make up, you know, add one additional place to gain victory points and for battles to happen and stuff. So it's a really well thought out game board. Next, I'll show you the little player boards. <clears throat> they are all the same. They're just different artwork. These literally have no individual abilities or anything like that. So I'll just show you the artwork. Really cool. Um, so basically this tracks your prayer points, which is the uh, currency of the game. Then you've got your move action, your recruit action, upgrade pyramid, move again, get two prayer points, buy a tile of any color, white, red, or blue, and get two prayer points. So every turn, uh, similar to... Wasteland Express, even though this came first, you would get five action tokens, and you have to put the five action tokens here, and once everybody's placed all five, that's the end of that round, the end of the day, and then the night happens, so there's a day phase and a night phase, and then the expansion introduces a dawn phase, so, and you have to put one token on each level of the pyramid each round. Uh, next, there's a bunch of little guys. Everybody has 12. They start the game with 10 out and 2 in the reserve. And they're all slightly different. Not really slightly. They're pretty different. So you got the spear guys. The Wolverine girls. See, I didn't know Wolverine was back in Egyptian days, did you? Wolverine, that adamantium. It lasts forever. Alright. And here's your little tokens. So, like I said, everybody gets five. And then you get a little Ankh symbol to keep track of your uh, prayer points. So this is the little Ankh they give you. Come on, camera. You know you want to look at it. Come on. Come on. You all right, girl? You all right? Come on. Come on. Alright, well, it's not one to do it. So, it's a little onk, though. That's how you keep... There you go. Keep track of your prayer points. Then everybody gets five of these little tracking tokens. Has a uh, beetle scarab, I think is what it's called. And then everybody has a, a turn order marker. So, the squares I showed you at the top of the board are actually turn order squares. So... Everybody will have their little thing, and that'll be the turn order. And I'll tell you how that's determined later. But anyways, um, everybody gets those. And these are the different uh, victory point markers. The circles are temporary, and the squares are permanent. So there's some for uh, winning battles, upgrading your pyramids to level 4, some you get at specific temples, some you get on the path to Tosseti, um, some you get for holding more than one temple during the night at the end of the day, and then there's some temporary ones for controlling one temple, but if somebody comes and fights you and kills all your dudes or pushes you out of the temple, then they take that from you. So that's really cool. The victory points are constantly fluctuating as battles happen and uh, different areas of the board are overtaken by different players. So you really want to go for at least half of your victory points being permanent so that they can't be stolen. Then you got these battle cards and these are always fun, I'm being sarcastic, to explain when you're teaching the game. So the Scythe, which is also a wonderful game, uh, is the strength, and whoever has the highest strength wins the battle, period. The Blood is how many guys you kill from the other guy's troop, if, well no, regardless of whether you win the battle or not. And then the Shield is how many of these 
blood drops you block. So, for example, if these two fought, he would win because he has a higher strength. He would try to kill two of this guy's dudes, but he has a shield of three, so none of them would die. He would try to kill one of this guy's dudes, but nobody would die because he has a one shield. Right? Simple enough. So that's how combat works, but there's ways to buff your strength and damage and uh, shields. All right, that's all Tosetti stuff. <clears throat> now the monsters. There are a bunch of monsters in this game, and they are awesome. Mine are not painted. Sorry. There's a mummy. There's a beetle. Very cool beetle that you can't see. Look at that. All right. The snake. The sneaky snake. Pain in the butt snake. Cancels all other monsters abilities snake. Yeah. <sighs> you want this guy. Um, there's the elephant. This is uh, Betsy. She's a uh, furry hippo. I don't know. I don't know what she is. Alright. Here's the Sphinx. And the uh, girl Sphinx. I'm sure there's some other word that I'm just ignorant to that this is supposed to be called. But you can't see it anyways. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. There we go. Alright. Then there's a phoenix. This is a good one. Alright. And there's a ram. Bah, ram, you... And a scorpion. Scorpion is bad A. Love the scorpion. And then there's uh, these little mercenaries. Some of these monsters are from the expansion. These are as well. They just give you additional units. But only one person can get the additional uh, one of the additional units per person. So one person couldn't buy all six of these and have a crazy advantage. All right. Now, we have the pyramid. So, in the base game, you'll have a red pyramid. Big old D4s. A blue pyramid. And a white pyramid. So, depending on the level of your pyramid... That will determine what power-up tiles you can buy. And I'm about to talk about the power-up tiles in a minute. And this is from the expansion, the Black Pyramid and the Black Tiles. So, it's awesome components. You don't ever roll these. They're just there to show you what level your pyramids are at. But it was an awesome idea. Because D4s, in case you didn't notice, are pyramids. These are... Additional action die, or die, additional action tokens. So the gold can only be used for specific things on power-up cards that you buy. The silver have to be used at the exact same moment as another power-up, or another action die, or action token. What is up with me and dice? I need to play King of Tokyo. Alright. And these are the priests. They come with the expansion. And... These are the power-up tiles. 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 Okay? You get the point? There's a lot of power-up tiles. So there's level 1, 2, 3, and 4 for each color of pyramid. So there's white, red, blue, and black power-up tiles. Level 1 through 4. 
you have to pay the level of the tile in prayer points to purchase it and you have to have a pyramid of that color and that level so you'd have to have a level one blue to buy this and you'd have one you have to have one prayer point available all right the only other thing i haven't spoken about in the base game are these divine intervention cards you can use these at different points during the game if it has this symbol on it it's for battle if it has a morning symbol on it light it's for use during daytime if it has the moon and the stars guess what yep you use it during the night phase and i can't seem to find any but there should be some somewhere anyways you get the idea you can add these to battle hide them underneath your battle card so the other people can't see it and the theme is it's divine intervention from the gods helping you in battle uh, they do different things um, finally there is a path to Tosseti and this is really cool I like it anyways so you have priests and they're traveling along this road trying to get to Tosseti if you get one of your priests here you get a permanent victory point a black permanent victory point otherwise you stop along the way and get these different items some of them you get to keep and choose when you use them some of them you have to use that round where they go right back to the board um, and as you go along you get different immediate benefits so when you cross here you pick up this uh, power up that has to be used this round and you get two pair points if you cross here you get three pair points so on and so forth these little areas give you skills so these little tiles here are skills each player gets three priests so if you pick up a skill you take the priest off of the path put it on the board to replace one of your, your one of your units and they then gain that skill so i was playing one time with a friend of mine ryan um and he got one where i had to play my battle card before he even selected his so he got to see what i was going to play before I even before he even chose what he was going to play. And usually you choose at the same time. So that was pretty bad. And on top of that, if another priest ever gains another skill, all priests share skills between them. So if you get all three of your priests pick up skills and are on the battlefield, all three of those priests gets, get all of those skills. So it just keeps adding up. But you lose your priests. So your other option is to stop here pick up this item and then go back to the beginning the only time you remove them from the path is when they pick up a skill so you could just keep coming down here get a victory point go back to the beginning go here get this item go back to the beginning come here get this item go back to the beginning and just keep gaining benefits or you could just get a bunch of skills boost your army and uh destroy everybody so anyway that's uh kemet all the components in kemet and the expansion Tosseti. Uh, really hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, this is one of my favorite games and uh, it does see quite a bit of play. So uh, please like, comment, and subscribe and check out the rest of our videos at GamingOnBoard.com or you can look at our channel on YouTube Gaming On Board to see all of our videos there. Uh, if you visit the website, we have links to our Facebook and Instagram account. So we do post daily to the Instagram account. And uh, we're always looking for feedback or suggestions or maybe some other type of video you want to see on a specific game or maybe some playthroughs. Um, we could do that. But uh, just give us some feedback. Um, we're really responsive. If you comment or ask a question, we'll be quick to respond. So. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching the video. And remember, play all the games.